Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where I do photography tutorials. I share tips and tricks and do occasional gear reviews as well. And this is week seven of the Photo Genius Photography Challenge, which is a weekly challenge designed to help you take better photos and get more from your cameras all while staying safely at home during these testing times. I put a video out every Monday, and in that video I announce the theme, I share some tips and tricks on how you can achieve goals based on that theme, and then you can upload your images to social media. Last week's theme was black and white and monochrome photography, and you guys are amazing. Hundreds of images uploaded to Instagram and our Facebook group, and I wanna start this video off by saying a big thank you to all of you for getting involved in the challenge. I do check out each and every image, which is getting harder as the weeks goes on, but you guys are amazing, so thank you. Now the theme for this week's challenge is night photography and if you're sharing and posting your images to social media, please use this week's hashtag which is PGWeek7. Now I'm really excited about this week's challenge. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun because you're gonna be taking photos after sundown as opposed to taking photos during the day. And this challenge is therefore gonna be about um, controlling light and trying to take pictures when there isn't much of light. So you're gonna be learning about doing uh, long exposures, controlling your shutter speed. And of course, in a moment, I've got some cool tips to share with you. I'm gonna talk you through how to set your cameras up. But before we get into it, let me just show you some images that I took recently. Now these images were taken pre-coronavirus and if you have a DSLR, mirrorless or similar camera with manual controls, then there is absolutely no reason why you can't take photos just like these. As I often say in my videos, it's not so much about the gear, but how you use it. And of course, in this video, like all my videos, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, of course, I appreciate that some of you will still be in total lockdown and housebound and not be able to get out and take photos as you would like to normally. Um, we're very fortunate here in Brisbane. We're starting to see some restrictions being lifted, but it's very important not to be complacent. So we're taking things uh, one day at a time, one step at a time. Let's work together, guys. Let's rid ourselves of COVID-19. So if all you can do this week is take a photo from the uh, your balcony or the view from a window, that's fine. Maybe you can get out and explore some night photography in your garden or take a photo from the end of your driveway. It doesn't matter too much. Let's work this week on nailing the techniques. So once this is over, we can get out there and take some amazing night photos. So now let's talk about what gear you're gonna need. Well, for nighttime photography, you're gonna really need a camera that has manual functions because you're gonna to wanna to be able to control the key camera functions, which are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. A DSLR camera, mirrorless camera, or bridge camera with manual options is ideal. Another must have bit of kit, of course, is a tripod, but don't worry if you haven't got a tripod, stick around, because as long as you can find something solid and stable to rest the camera on, you're fine. So a stack of books, a tabletop, a chair, that will do for now. But if you have got a tripod, for this week, you're gonna use it, definitely. Um, I get a lot of people asking me about tripods and what to buy, so I will put some listed recommendations in the links below this video. One of them that I mention all the time in my videos because I love it so much is this. It's the Manfrotto Pixie. It's a mini compact tripod, very useful, never leaves my camera bag, and I use it all the time. Again, details in the description below the video. In terms of gear, that's about it. Camera mode, we're gonna be shooting full manual in this video, so we're gonna go for it. Now, if you're not quite ready for full manual and that sounds a bit scary, you can also use shutter priority mode if you wish. And I've done another video about nighttime photography where I particularly focus on that mode. And you might wanna check that out. So again, a link below this video, but also I'll put it up here for you so you can check it out. So as I just mentioned, we're shooting full manual in this video, so we wanna make sure that we've selected M on the mode dial on the top of the camera. This now means we can control ISO, aperture and shutter speed. Let's start with ISO. Now in this video, I don't wanna go into the details about ISO too much, but let me start by saying one thing. If you take a camera like this out in the evening when it's dark, your camera is in control, and one thing it will almost certainly do every time is increase the ISO. By increasing the ISO, your picture gets brighter. So that kind of makes sense. But when you use a higher ISO, your picture also starts to look grainy and soft. We call this digital noise. 
So when you're in the manual mode, you can start controlling this yourself. And one thing we're going to do is we're actually going to drop the ISO right the way down to the lowest setting so we don't get any digital noise. Aperture. Aperture is built into the lens. It's an opening and is another way of controlling light. The wider the aperture, the more light, the brighter the image. The smaller the aperture, the less light passes through the lens, the darker the image. So you might be thinking, let's open the aperture up really wide. But again, we're going to do something slightly different here. We're actually going to close the aperture down a touch to around f8 to f11. This is a smaller aperture, but this will give us more sharpness throughout our image. Now, again, I don't want to go into too much detail in this video because I've done a separate video all about something called depth of field that explains it in more detail. But around f8 to f11 is a great ballpark aperture range, particularly if you like doing landscape photography. Now, once you've locked in the ISO and the aperture, that leaves just the shutter speed to adjust. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment. Now, what I'm going to do is just walk you through those steps once again, but showing you on a Nikon camera, followed by a Canon camera. For this demonstration, to replicate nighttime, I've chosen a dark subject against a dark background. OK, so here we have a Nikon D3500 and we're going to start by adjusting the ISO. To change this, we can press the I button on the back of the camera. We want to navigate over here to ISO. So we move over to the right, up, press OK to select and then change the ISO to what we want, which is the lower number, 100. Press OK to confirm and the I button to reset the screen. So now we've set the ISO, we're going to move on to the aperture, which is an opening in the lens. And what we're going to do is close the aperture down, which is a bigger F number. And we're going to do this by holding the plus minus button on the top of the camera and then dial into the right with the dial on the top of the camera. Once I've got F11, I'm going to stop. So now we've locked in the ISO and the aperture. All we need to do now is adjust the shutter speed to balance our light meter and get a good exposure. Now the way the light meter works is we want to aim for the middle marker which is a zero. The plus means brighter image or overexposure. The minus means a darker image or underexposure. And at the moment we've got all these markers over here to the left telling us that if we take a picture right now it's going to be underexposed. So what we're going to do is slow the shutter down or extend the time. Currently it's one second. I dial to the left with the dial on the top of the camera and here we have two seconds, three seconds. Keep an eye on the meter and you'll see that at 10 seconds the meter is now balanced so we're ready to take our picture. Now one more great tip to avoid any camera shake is to use the camera self timer. Press the button, turn the timer on and press OK. Now all we've got to do is focus, press the button down the beeping you hear is the timer counting down. That's the sound of the shutter opening, which of course is going to be open for 10 seconds. So we've got a short wait and then we'll see our image. The shutter closes. There's our picture and we're done. So here we've got a Canon DSLR camera. This is the 1500D or Canon T7. We're going to start by lowering the ISO. So we have an ISO button here. Press the button, select the lower 100 ISO and then press the set button to select. Moving on, we're now going to adjust the aperture to F11 by holding the AV button down and dialing to the right with the dial on the top of the camera. F8, 9, 10, 11. Now we've selected the ISO and the aperture, all we've got to do now is adjust the shutter speed to balance our light meter. The light meter has a zero marker, which is what we want to aim for. We have a plus side for overexposure and a minus for underexposure. And with the Canon cameras, to activate the light meter, you wake it up by pressing the shutter button lightly on the top of the camera. Currently, we're clearly going to underexpose our image. So what we're going to do now is adjust the shutter speed by slowing it down. Now we do this by dialing to the left, but before I start, I'm going to press the shutter button again to wake up the meter, dial to the left with the dial on the top of the camera, and you keep an eye on the meter, which is currently flashing. So this is a one second exposure, two seconds, you see the meter moving towards the middle, four, eight, 
10 seconds, just the same as the Nikon. And at 10 seconds, we have balanced the meter. Again, the meter does go to sleep. So if you just press the shutter button, it wakes it up. So here we've now balanced the light and this is an exposure time of 10 seconds, aperture f11 and shutter speed of 100. Now again, a good tip with a Canon camera is to use the self timer. So you press the self timer button. I'm going to select the two second self timer, press set. All I've got to do now is focus, press the button and that's the timer counting down. The shutter is now open and because this is a 10 second exposure, we're going to have to wait a few moments. And here's our image. And just to recap, the settings were 10 seconds, at f11 ISO 100. Okay, pro tip I want to share with you guys. If you're taking a long exposure photo, so basically if you're shooting in low light or at night time and you're using a tripod, make sure you turn off any image stabilization or vibration reduction. So if your camera has stabilization built in or your lens has stabilization built in, often called vibration reduction as well, if you're using a Nikon camera, make sure you turn it off. It's designed for when you're hand holding the camera and can actually work against you when you're on a tripod. So that's a really good tip. Now, last night I went out to take a photo. It's on the monitor behind me here. This is taken at the local boat harbor, just a few minutes drive from where we live. Now, it was very tricky to take this photo. It was incredibly dark. I could hardly see what I was taking photos of. It wasn't great conditions, to be honest. It was very overcast and there was hardly any moonlight. But this photo was taken using exactly the same process as I just explained to you guys. So taking a closer look at the image I shot last night, which was taken with a Canon camera, the image is okay, but needed some work. So I put it into Lightroom, fixed the awful white balance, adjusted the exposure, and yet it looks a lot nicer. There is a bit of lens flare I don't like that I could fix in Photoshop if I could be bothered, but I'm not sure I will. And here's why. It's an okay image. It, it, but it's just an okay image. It's not a great image. It doesn't excite me that much. And it's not really to do with how I shot it or how I set the camera up on this occasion. It's just to do with the conditions. I would have liked some more clouds in the sky. I would have liked the moon to have been backlighting the clouds, but it just wasn't to be. And this just goes to show you that sometimes it doesn't come together the way you wish. And it's not worth worrying about. That's the joy and the challenge of photography. So we've established in this video that a great way of taking photos at night time is to do a long exposure, which means you're leaving the shutter open for an extended period of time. Now, this is where it can get interesting. Let's say you take a 10 second exposure of a building. What's the result? Well, if your camera was on a tripod, a nice sharp photo of the building because the camera didn't move and the building didn't move during that 10 second exposure time. Now let's say you were to repeat the process, take another photo of the same building, but this time because it's windy, a tree next to the building is moving around. The result now will be different. The building didn't move, the camera didn't move because it's on a tripod. Because the tree was moving in the wind, the tree will be blurry. Now you can use blur creatively. Take a look at this photo I took in Paris a few months ago, or this picture taken of the Story Bridge here in Brisbane. So with both of these images, I got lucky. There were clouds in the sky. It was a little bit windy. That movement of the clouds in the sky creates this lovely blur effect. Sometimes it just all comes together. So having that bit of movement when doing long exposures can really give your photos that creative edge. And you may recall in week two of the photography challenge that we actually explored this when the theme was painting with light. That was a lot of fun. And if you missed out, I'll put a link in the description below this video and up here as well so you can check it out for yourselves. Taking photos at night is a lot of fun and I really can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Don't forget if you're posting your images to social media to please use the hashtag PG week seven so that way I and others can check out your images. If you've enjoyed this video please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget you can leave your comments, suggestions and questions down below. Hope to see you again sometime soon. See ya, bye.